In this video on cacti and succulent cultivation, I'm going to be talking about the propagation of plants. And why propagate plants? Well, it's fun and it might be a means to increase your collection. Perhaps you want to share your plants with friends and family, maybe even sell your plants as well. It could be as a safety net. So for example, the parent plant of this aloe I've just planted outside as it's supposedly hardy and I've given it winter protection but I've taken a cutting from it just in case it doesn't su survive so I can still keep this in my collection. It could be that you want to rescue a plant. The parent of this Caroluma had rotted but I was able to successfully take a cutting from it and I've managed to save the plant. So I'm going to share a few tips on propagation and use examples from around me. Plants have evolved many ways to reproduce in order to survive, increase and colonise new ground. Sexual reproduction that results in seeds is one way. Asexual or vegetative means is the other. And in this, a parent plant produces a clone of itself that is genetically identical. Many plants use both methods. The natural environments where cacti and succulents grow can be very harsh and they can be exposed to all sorts of dangers. That can be in the form of animals, people, it could be storms, so strong winds, flash flooding, fire. Plants have adapted to these conditions and actually taken advantage of them as well in order to spread. A succulent example of this is Portulacaria afra, the pork bush. This plant is beloved by elephants and they'll readily eat it and in so doing damage it. One way it's evolved to cope with that is if stems are broken and dropped to the ground, they have the ability to reroot. So given a bit of luck, a broken stem will regrow. Prickly pear cacti or puntia are another good example of this. The pads are actually very easy to break off and in the natural environment it could be a passing animal breaks a pad off and it gets stuck to the fur of that animal and it gets transported some distance, falls to the ground and then is able to root. I'm going to go through some of the main methods that plants use to propagate themselves and we can take advantage of those means. One of the more unusual is from adventitious buds. This method is appropriate and can be found in some of the calencos. So this one is Calenco de Grimontianum. This is Calo, Calenco Rohi. And I also have a leaf from Calenco Tubiflora. And at the ends of these leaves, tiny plantlets are produced. These readily drop to the ground and then quickly root and grow. In collections, these plants can spread really quickly. And some collectors will say they're a pain, they're weeds, and you'll find them growing in many plant pots, but they can very easily be pulled out. And I would highly recommend growing these as they're fun and the, the flowers are incredibly rewarding. They grow very fast and in full sunlight can flower. They're also a good introduction to people as well and particularly children. So that's adventitious buds. Some plants produce offsets, so like this mammalaria here. Even while they're growing on the plant, they have tiny roots and it's possible to tease these plants out and they already have vestigial roots developing on them so they can be potted up. Some succulents do this as well. Now this is a whole warvia and if I tease and break one of the stems I can pull out a plant and this has multiple small roots just below the leaves. So again, ready for planting.
and in nature, perhaps that's just waiting to be knocked by something like a buffalo going past it, for it to fall off and root into the ground. Now, some plants produce mats, so like the crassulas, in the natural environment they're creeping and they're spreading across the ground and as they creep they send out roots searching for the soil below. So the stems have many roots on them and these are very easy to propagate and you can simply snap off a section of creeping stem that already has a root on it and that's ready to grow. Some of the echeverias also do this. Again, this is a good example, Echeveria prolifica, has very long stems, lots of roots and tiny shoots at the ends. And these can be broken off and rooted. There's another crassula here, same kind of idea. So that's mat forming plants. Stolons are another group. Now this is where there is actually an underground stem that forms a shoot and comes to the surface and grows. Sansevierias do this and also agaves. And with this one there is a stolon shoot coming out of the bottom of a pot. Now they are too small to cut off yet but I have another agave example here. This is one plant connected but there are also small ones around the outside that I've been able to tease out that already have roots and that is ready for planting as well. Another group of plants are those that produce tubers. An example here would be the Serapegia. And I'm able to tease out the tubers from this. This already has a shoot and the tiniest of roots as well. And that can simply be placed on top of some soil and it will root. Now there are some succulents that you could divide through their roots. Now this is a hardy succulent, Sedum spectabula, hardy in the UK, and I've used a spade to divide this clump in two halves. This plant is great because it's loved by butterflies. So we've looked at a number of ways that are connected to this kind of a root type systems or spreading stems. Now we're going to look at more conventional cuttings and other means from the top parts of the plant that you can take. So conventional stem cuttings, it could be with something like Adela sperma, thin stems, quite twiggy, but can actually easily be snapped off. With thicker stem plants, like the pork bush, it would be best to use a sharp knife to cut these. I also have an example here from a cacti, so this Cleister cactus, I have cut the stem and you'll find that with all of these examples you should let them callus over and dry for a few days before planting and that reduces the chance of rot. Leaf cuttings is another way. And a good example of that is from the Graptopetalum paraguayensis. And this is very easy to root from leaves. When you take a leaf, choose a healthy, mature leaf, not one that's starting to go over. And actually use your hands and fingers to tease an entire leaf off. Make sure you take the entire leaf as it's the end point that will root. As a rule of thumb, the thinner leaf cuttings probably won't work. The thicker leaves might do. So things like the pachyphytums and some echeverias as well. 
Some plants like these do form rosettes and of course you could just chop the rosette itself off and root that. So rather than taking the runners, you could take the individual rosettes, cut those and root them. It's particularly helpful to do that with some plants, such as Echeverius, which can become very leggy in time, or like this Anonium, which gradually gets taller and taller and becomes leggy. So here I've taken a cutting from the top, dried it out, that's ready for planting now. And I could take multiple cuttings from this. It's also good with a parent plant, if you are trying to tidy its shape up, is you could cut it lower. So like here, there's a shoot growing. And if you cut it lower, hopefully the plant will respond and send up multiple shoots. I have an example here, another Grapvectalum, but again like an Echeveria, this had become very tall and leggy with a bare stem. I chopped the top off and used that for a cutting. But where the base is, it's now sent up lots of new healthy growth. So hopefully that will form a nice new tidy plant. So that's rosettes. Globular cacti like this Mammalaria here are a little bit harder to divide. They don't have roots already forming on their offsets, but you might be able to tease very carefully one of these plants off. If not, then you'll need a sharp knife to divide it and again leave it to dry before planting. Columnar plants, so these could be cacti or succulents and could vary in size from tiny stapelias to giant euphorbias like this one here, can also be cut. It may be with a really large plant that they've reached a ceiling or a roof and need cutting to reduce the size. Euphorbias do produce milky sap which is poisonous and you need to avoid your hands uh, getting it on your hands you need to avoid it getting into your eyes so wear gloves maybe even a mask and to stop the bleeding of the sap spray the cut ends with water or dunk the cut end in a bucket of water for maybe five or ten minutes and that will stop it bleeding because that sap will end up looking unsightly on the plant so the last group is flat stem cuttings so typically the epiphytic cacti, so things like epiphyllums, like this one, ripsalis, and also um, Christmas cactus or Easter cactus. The cuttings of these can be taken and they do like a little bit more moisture, but still let them dry out first of all. So in terms of long-term growth, give them more water than you would normal cacti and succulents. This was a cutting taken a year ago and it's already sent up nice, healthy shoots. Now, with regard to cuttings, I will use the example of a prickly pear. Here, I've taken this a few days ago and it's calloused over nicely and is ready for planting. Where possible, cut at a joint. So with all cacti and succulents, if you've got the choice, cut at a joint as they're more likely to root at that point. Now, if you're rescuing a plant, it may be a different matter. So here I could cut at the joint, but if I was purely trying to rescue it because the base was perhaps rotted or it had something like vine weevil in there or damaged by other insects like red spider mite, I could find a healthy part of the plant, cut it off and root it. Ideally know the name of a plant that you're growing because then you can do some research and see what other people suggest is the best method of propagation and some things will work better than others. The beauty of most cacti and succulents is there will be a method out there that you can use and try and have fun doing it as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video, look forward to seeing you again, like it, thumbs up and share as before and see you in the future.